Okay, we're going to be looking at cells and the nature of life. Previously, we've talked about the characteristics of life, what it means to be alive. And one of the things that we learned about was that uh, for things to be considered alive, they have to be made up of cells. That's one of the first things. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about cells and life a little bit. But uh, first, a quick introduction. Whoa. It sounds like nighttime. We need to make this stop. The idea of spontaneous generation. What is going on? Oh, there we go. Spontaneous generation. In the Middle Ages, and I have a quick story about my balcony, but first of all, in the Middle Ages, scientists thought that you could create life from things that were not living previously. Okay, and so uh, one of the things that they've actually, uh, this has actually been turned into science textbook material from back in the 17th and 18th century, but luckily we got a little bit more clever. People realized that you leave garbage out, cockroaches appear, but nobody thought to stand there and watch it for you know an entire week. Nobody has that kind of time. Moldy grain turns into mice, and uh, muddy soil turns into frogs. In actuality, this was actually a recipe for mice that was in something like a science textbook from the 17th century. It says, place a dirty shirt, I've got plenty of those, or some rags, also those, in an open pot or barrel containing a few grains of wheat or some wheat bran, and in 21 days, I like how it's so specific here, mice will appear. There will be adult males and females present, and they will be capable of mating and reproducing more mice. Can you imagine students in a science classroom nowadays like trying to conduct and start this? It'll probably work. So my brief story is I decided that it was a clever idea to create more space in my apartment. This is maybe two or three years ago. I decided to put my garbage cans on the balcony, but they had the covers on them, you know, so I thought it'd be nice there. And I ended up going on a trip for four or five days, and I came back. I forgot to empty the garbage. I came back, opened up my curtains, looked on my balcony floor, and there were hundreds of maggots everywhere. I had basically created life from garbage, basically. Turns out, well, obviously, some flies managed to get in and laid some eggs. Those eggs grew up, turned into maggots, and started crawling all over. It was so gross. I couldn't go out there for a long time. Posted on Facebook trying to get help. And, and in the end, after like 20 people tried to give me some methods for cleaning it up, uh, my friend in medical school just said, why don't you just wait? And I was like, what? And I'd waited, and they actually all turned into flies and flew away. And that was fantastic. It was uh, the best experiment I've done ever and I didn't open the garbage can and I ended up just like wrapping it a thousand times and uh, hiding it somewhere so hopefully somebody does not find that anyways I hope you enjoyed my recipe for maggots pretty gross this crazy idea was debated by European scientist a guy named Louis Pasteur uh, you should recognize this name it has to do with pasteurization of milk so he solved a bunch of things. Great guy, this guy, and he looks really clever. His glasses are a little bit crooked, but I understand. I experienced that from time to time. 1859 is when he said, you know what? I think that life can only come from other life. Okay, Life can only come from other life. This is part of the cell theory. Look at that, how cute. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Life can only come from other life. In this case, this is sexual reproduction requiring two partners to exchange their uh, gametes. Gametes is a fancy word for sex cells, which include sperm cells and egg cells, and they combine together and you can make a new living organism. I don't know where that came from. Okay, Sometimes um, mistakes can happen. Cute, cute. And so this is the idea of, this is one of the things that started this whole cell theory and not just that everything is made up of cells that is living but that life can only come from other life cells can only come from other cells now this might raise some questions so please post your questions and start thinking about what you want uh, on Edmodo uh, the microscope was one of the first things that changed um, our idea of this thing. We, this, this guy, Robert Hooke, was the first person to, of course, he didn't have a microscope that looked like that. That's what we have right now. But he used something a lot more simple. But he ended up creating one of the most famous sketches ever. And this is a sketch of tiny little compartments 
from cork, basically, uh, plant material. And he was the first to record this um, that we know of. And from there, he gave the name uh, of cells because they looked like tiny little um, compartments, basically cells, like, uh, I can't remember the exact details, but something prison cell related. It's just small compartments where people basically slept in. And that's where we have the name uh, cells. He said, I shall call these cells. I don't know if he was from that country I was trying to imitate, but anyways. A few things about the microscope. Uh, maybe I should split this up. Okay, let's let's go through this as well, too. Quick things about the microscope. You're going to be using this in class. There's a bunch of different parts here. Um, this is called the arm. You're going to hold it. This is the base. You're, there's a bunch of little lenses here, objective lenses. This is obviously where you put your eye to look through. And there's a bunch of knobs and things like that. So uh, here are the names really quickly. And then we'll go through a few of the ways to make sure you can actually see things because it's not as easy as you think. You don't just pop something here onto the stage and then look through and then say, I have found it. You actually have to do some adjustments. So we're going to practice this in class. It's called the body tube, the revolving nose piece. You can flip this around to get different magnifications. Look at that awesome sound. Objective lens. These, these are called the objective lenses. This is the arm. That's where you would hold if you're trying to carry this from place to place. It's pretty heavy. This is the stage, the place where you dance and perform, and, just kidding, place your microscope slides. And you have to make sure you put your microscope slides under the stage clips. Depending on the microscope, there may be a fancier way to do that. I think our microscopes have a fancier mechanism, so make sure you can uh, figure that out. The point is the slide has to stay put on the stage. Course focus just means you turn this to help you focus large movements of focus and then there's usually a, a smaller knob. Sometimes it could be attached to the outside of the course focus, and that will help you make smaller adjustments. Basically, when you turn these focus knobs, what happens is the stage moves up and down, and that actually changes the field, uh, the plane of focus. So what it, it adjusts what becomes clear in the image. The base, obviously. Diaphragm, more on this later, but you can adjust um, the focus of the light, I guess, is the best way to say that. Uh, the focus of the light. That can help to create a more defined image so you can play around with that. And nowadays, thank goodness, we can plug these in and we have a little light at the bottom. Uh, before, when I was in high school and middle school, we had a little mirror at the bottom and we had to shine another light down here and then we had to adjust the mirror which is kind of fun, but now it's totally pointless because we can just plug it in and turn it on, use some electricity there. Using the microscope, uh, obviously place a slide on the microscope and fix it to the stage using some of the clips. Click the nose piece to the lowest magnification. So the nose piece right here, you're going to put on the lowest magnification. You can look at the side and see some numbers. Usually it says 4 times 4, so that's not very cool just multiplying, increasing the size by 4, but the eyepiece often has a magnification of 10. So you do 10 times whatever the nose piece lens is showing, so 10 times 4 equals 40, and that's usually the lowest magnification on a lot of these microscopes. Look into the eyepiece and use the coarse focus to try to move. Actually, you should start by moving the coarse focus all the way as low as possible so the stage is as far away from the lens as possible, and then you start moving it up. While you're doing this, you should be looking through, and you should be moving your head and checking from the side, view from the side, to make sure um, the stage doesn't come too high and you end up damaging one of the actual lenses. Once everything is in place and you, you can see what you want, then usually if you just switch the nose piece lens over to the next magnification, you should be able to just make a few adjustments and uh, end up seeing something in focus. But um, it's the same steps using low power. You can do that as long as objective. Do not use the coarse focusing knob, but you'd use the fine focus knob. But the, the tip I just gave you previously is to focus at low power and then don't touch anything, but just revolve the nose piece to the next lens and it should be pretty close and you just then adjust the fine focus knob which would be pretty pretty cool a uh, couple questions pause the video try to answer this will low power or a high power magnification 
produce the greatest field of view, the largest field of view? And what magnification will a 10 times eyepiece and a 40 times objective lens produce? Okay, I think that's it for microscopes. Fantastic. Uh, we're going to continue on to the next video a little bit later. Make sure you know how to use a microscope and make sure you understand that life can only come from other life.